always enjoy coming to Dublin and other places in Ireland, and so does Barbara, my wife. And uh, it's uh, always inspiring to be together with uh, thinkers and doers in this wonderful country. Um, and um, as um, the color of this country is green, um, it relates, uh, I think, particularly strongly to green economy, green growth, and that's what I'm essentially talking about. The bioeconomy is, in my understanding, a key concept to implement um, green growth and for sustainable development. Um, as uh, Jeffrey Sachs said in a, his speech at the uh, Bioeconomy Bio Summit, which we held um, in November last year in Berlin, with 700 people or so, um, we will not be able to get the sustainable development goals implemented without a strong focus on bioeconomy. And then he listed the uh, at least eight of the 17 SDGs, which he feels uh, are uh, uh, need to essentially take bioeconomy concepts and uh, innovations into account. I will talk about these four points, the emerging bioeconomy, what's happening there, what's driving it, um, and what is, what is it, what's driven there. This, uh, this, the terminology of bioeconomy is really changing. Um, the word was created in the 80s, 1980s, um, but it has changed its meaning conceptually. I will talk a bit about that. Then opportunities, challenges, there are real challenges, especially in relation to food security and nutrition security. <coughs> we need to make sure that uh, things don't get uh, out of hand with uh, the wrong type of bioeconomy. And I say up front, bioeconomy per se is not good. It's also not bad per se. So I'm not pontificating uh, uh, bioeconomy as such. We need sustainable, knowledge-based, sound, long-term oriented bioeconomy. And uh, uh, that requires a few uh, uh, principles and a heavy dose of science, I can say up front. What is really bringing this to the forefront is that um, consumption of resources will increase further. Uh, in 2015, about 9 billion people will consume more like 12 billion people by today's consumption standards. And the fundamental vision uh, I've written down here of bioeconomy is to reconcile humanity with nature. Nothing less than that. Um, there were articles in the media uh, uh, already <coughs> uh, a, uh, a decade ago, Nature is No More, it was a headline article of Time magazine, or Nature is on. In the so-called <coughs> Anthropocene, so in the age, the Earth age, where humankind impacts on many processes of uh, nature, not only uh, the landscape, but also the atmosphere, the oceans, and so on, um, we feel, I, I, I see a major uh, role for a bioeconomy based approach uh, in order to bring humanity back in, in line with uh, what this planet can usefully cope with. That's what I mean re by reconciling humanity with nature. But I also mean business. Um, we need to somehow <coughs> biologize the whole economy so that sustainable processes um, can, uh, can play a role. Uh, the building blocks of the bioeconomy's uh, transformative agenda are these three. Sustainable development, the business opportunities, 
and changing consumer behaviors. So the demand side is at least as important as the supply and production side to a bioeconomy. Actually, um, many feel that uh, uh, unless we tighten our belts, especially those of uh, those nations which are high-income nations, such as uh, Ireland, Germany, etc. Uh, if we don't start with point number three, the <coughs> bioeconomy has no chance. Uh, but there is also uh, innovation in changing consumer behavior. Uh, uh, resource efficiency, reuse, the shared economy approaches. Um, health and value orientation uh, in, um, in consumption, uh, all the way into the pharmaceutical sectors, not only in the food economy. Business opportunities, that's where the challenges and opportunities of bioeconomy relate to new types of industrialization, bringing bio and information and communications technology together in the fourth industrial revolution, industry 4.0, the industrialization uh, phase in which we have entered uh, with <coughs> a lot of not only automatization but autonomous industrial processes. Uh, the, the car manufacturing hall where you hardly see any people but where the computer uh, um, uh, guided um, um, machinery assembles the car, or the 3D printing revolution uh, which will enter the food and has already entered the food industry where you deliver food uh, uh, into to the bedside of the retirement <coughs> home, your favorite food for your grandmother being there and she prints it out herself. So it's printing next to her out of protein mix. Actually the stuff tastes a lot better than maybe 20 years ago when we were tasting uh, astronauts' food. Um, I mean, there, are, um, there are processes which cater to a, a, a bioeconomy which is also operating at fairly small scale, not only at big industry scale. So miniaturization is part of the business opportunities, lots of startups in the green economy. <coughs> And of course, fundamentally, point one, good nutrition for all people, mitigate climate change, maintain ecosystems functioning. As I said, uh, quoting Jeff Sachs, uh, that's what he was hammering home. This is our definition of bioeconomy is production and utilization of biological resources, technologies, and knowledge, the knowledge of how biosystems work the knowledge at cell level, but also at systems level, to provide products, processes, services in all economic sectors within the framework of a sustainable economic system. I can tell you, uh, this definition is no use for a presentation like this. Uh, but <coughs> behind it is at least uh, two day-long meetings of the Bioeconomy Council um, uh, three years ago. Um, and <clears throat> uh, what is really new in our approach, and that is spreading in many countries, is the focus on knowledge. So, what do we mean by knowledge here? Knowledge of biological systems includes also the technology of biomimicry, um, so copying nature. Um, uh, programming <coughs> the search capabilities of um, the brain of the bee um, and mapping that into the search and fly cap and direction capability of a drone um, is, in our opinion, the software of bioeconomy too. There's a group at Humboldt University in Berlin which does so. Yeah? I mean, uh, some of us have a good sense of direction, how to get from here home. Uh, uh, the bees flying around and uh, uh, have a great sense of direction, uh, but uh, it's a different type of uh, uh, brain functions which they have. So that's 
knowledge. That is biomimicry. This is copying from nature rather than uh, simply uh, looking at uh, the product of honey and etc., which of course is also great from, from the bees. The emerging bioeconomy <coughs> is not an economic sector, but a large cluster of interlinked value chains and value nets. I've listed here on the left-hand side uh, for you to glance at things which relate to bio-based materials, technologies, biosystems, intelligence, which I just talked about, cutting across sectors, which makes it extremely difficult to count what is bioeconomy. We don't have these statistics. We have sectoral statistics. We have no value chain of value web statistics. So we are currently wrestling at European level and uh, our statistical offices to redesign the, um, the, the uh, uh, data systems because if you if you're in counting, uh, it, it, count, uh, it doesn't count. Um, here are some products um, and, um, of uh, bioeconomy innovations from the consumer end. And um, um, uh, up there on the left is a, a flower-based uh, 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 car tire, which runs high speed. Uh, so this is competing with uh, a traditional rubber industry, which, as you know, is uh, extremely damaging to tropical forests. So uh, making bioeconomy better. If you plant an hectare of, uh, of with rubber trees and replace it with a hectare of oil palms, you do something very good for nature, because the rubber trees are um, uh, much worse than the oil palms. But of course, if you uh, take a hectare of tropical forest away and plant it with a hectare of uh, oil palms, you do something very bad for nature. Um, so. Uh, we need to, uh, when I say we need to reconcile humankind with, uh, with nature, uh, we need to go step by step and also do marginal improvements. That little yellow uh, plant grows uh, 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 like a weed everywhere around German fields, and I'm afraid also in Ireland. Löwenzahn, I don't know the English name. Dandelion. Huh? Dandelion. Okay. Well, you get your rubber uh, tire out of it. Thank you. Enzymes lowering effective washing temperatures. The whole enzyme industry is a cornerstone of biotech. Um, bioplastics, Coca-Cola and Pepsi are now very eager to get bioplastic bottles. Um, um, Coca-Cola is testing them already. Not only because uh, they have more appeal to consumers and uh, preferences, but also they keep the bubbles better. Um, so make a better bio-based product rather than just uh, 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 do substitution. Um, implants made from spider fibers, uh, for instance knee implants, um, bio-based building materials, new sugar substitutes, biopharmaceuticals based on proteins, and uh, um, biofuels um, uh, should be also on this one. I come back to some production processes later on, but started with the consumer products, um, uh, which uh, um, have already bio components in them and were especially designed because that has created a lot of excitement in, um, in consumer fairs, uh, which we had recently ex exhibiting these things from from our council. The bioeconomy is driven by these three things, resource conditions, consumer preferences, and science and, and technology. The resource conditions do not only mean a, a high or low oil price, but all the externalities, the climate effects of land use, um, and um, the, uh, um, the lack of a circular economy uh, around resources. Um, figuratively speaking, the planetary boundaries, those, those are driving. Uh, secondly, the consumer preferences and, and science and technology and biotech really drive the bioeconomy also to a, lot, a large extent. 
This started 10 years ago with an initiative by the European Commission in a meeting in Cologne, the so-called Cologne paper, 10 years ago. It had a focus on a substitution strategy. Substitution of fossil fuels, um, get, uh, um, get the oil out and get the biomass in. That strategy is, uh, has become much less significant in the bioeconomy strategies today. It's no longer the driver. It is resource protection and innovation. So if bioeconomy can be competitive, produce a better product, and uh, more sustainable, uh, that um, is uh, uh, what uh, keeps uh, driving the bioeconomy strategies in many countries. So moving from a, an innovation to an innovation-oriented strategy away from uh, uh, a merely substitution strategy. Let me come to some opportunities and focus on what we call our onion model of uh, uh, innovation and green growth through bioeconomy. Um, in the center here you have biomass production, which also has quite a lot of innovation investments by now. Uh, agriculture, forestry and, and marine. Um, in the second peel, there is food, and uh, feed and, uh, and energy. Um, in the processing, in the third uh, uh, circle, <coughs> uh, you have um, uh, processing of biomass for uh, further uh, uh, transformed foods, etc. The bio-based products um, in the auto rings and the biological intelligence um, examples, IT design, uh, pharma, uh, bionics in the outer ring. Um, the further you come from the inner circle to the outer circle, the higher the IP protection, the more uh, science investment is in there. There's also quite a bit at the center. Of this. this is not simply growing corn and, 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 and making ethanol out of it. But uh, at the outer circle, the bioeconomy is uh, it's science uh, uh, driven, uh, intellectual property protected uh, business, and that raises certain issues for global sharing and partnership with developing countries. Here are a few examples of sustainable innovations uh, out of industrial processes, so biorefineries, bio based chemical processes energy use of waste, precision farming, aquaculture, water treatments, new biological filter systems, phosphor, phosphate recovery from wastewater, and um, the so far uh, not very successful CO2 uh, uh, recovery work uh, as industrial feedstock. Um, but uh, there are two, two pilot plants for that to make, get CO2 back out of atmosphere uh, one at Bayer and one at BASF, I think the US also have a few. Uh, people are working on it, but not yet so successfully. Um, the project example I would like to add is related to wood. Uh, at the luncheon before, we talked a bit about wood and, uh, and forest. Um, <coughs> it's really a revolution of wood manufacturing happening, which uh, transforms um, wood into a, a new type of product for construction purposes. Um, uh, so biomass to chemical uh, in the second phase um, uh, changes um, um, the wood residues um, uh, ut utilization. Then the ligno sandwich uh, technology which permits you now to build uh, six-story wood-based houses because it's as strong as concrete and, um, and steel construction. And what's left over is then uh, a, uh, a basis for biogas. So don't burn your wood. We in Germany currently burn one-third of our wood uh, for energy. That's nonsense. Uh, Burn what's left over after you have used one, two, three, first for much more <coughs> high value manufacturing uh, uh, uses, 
and, and then burn the leftovers. So that's a strategy of uh, 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 wood utilization in, in our country. Last example, one of the biggest um, uh, problems in, in for the environment is the pulp and paper industry. And um, uh, this is, uh, of course, mostly wood products used for, for that. There are some really dramatic and wonderful progresses of recycling rates, getting the black water away from the rivers and so on. Let me come briefly to some challenges. Challenges relate to the change of the uh, world food equation. Um, the world food equation on the supply and demand side, where on the supply side productivity and technology are enhancing um, supply, where climate change has become and is becoming even more so a major threat, and where food innovations uh, in processing change the whole market picture. On the demand side, eating habits, waste, biomass uses are key, and in trade and markets, um, uh, the financial markets have taken a keen interest in, in what's traded there as commodities. So we have a new competition for biomass. The complementarities in value chains uh, need to be enhanced. And we need to include small farmers of the world into the bioeconomy, because um, after all, farming is a backbone of the bioeconomy. Uh, at a major conference which we had in November in Berlin, uh, we had tremendous interest from Asian countries with lots of small farmers. So bioeconomy and agriculture is not only a big farm, big business. Um, so um, that is uh, um, where, however, we still have challenges. Uh, uh, without collective action, you cannot include small farmers in, into modern value chains and value webs. The major problem is um, that biomass is on the globe not equally distributed. This is a world map of the trend of biomass uh, in the last decade, and um, uh, where it is uh, um, reddish, uh, uh, biomass has been decreasing, and where it's greenish, it has been increasing. Um, but uh, you all know that the bulk of world biomass is around the equators. It's uh, the biomass powerhouses are low and middle income countries, besides countries like maybe Sweden and Ireland. But uh, uh, the US certainly is not a strong uh, uh, basis for for biomass, also it shows a bit more increase. So if we go for a bio-based economy, uh, we will have some global distribution issues to deal with. And uh, I think the mega deal should be uh, uh, not uh, a new raw material biomass trade from south to north, but uh, a lot of sharing of technology with low-income countries. and. Um, uh, so that uh, biomass can be efficiently manufactured into higher value products where it grows rather than shipped around the world as wood pellets or what have you. The other challenge, I've already touched upon, and uh, Tom, I'm glad to hear that you read very much focused on climate smart agriculture. Um, if you look at the world map of food insecurity and the uh, world map of how agriculture is impacted by climate change, it's a map uh, and from an article which I did with Tim Wheeler in Science uh, uh, a few years ago. Actually, we were sitting in Dublin when we said we should write this article. Who were at that conference? Mary Robinson and Sergey. So, a year later it was published. Uh, oh, how Actually, our, the last sentence of that article is climate smart, smart agriculture, forgive me for saying that, is not good enough. Yeah. It needs to be a climate smart food system. And that's something different from just agriculture, broader than, uh, than agriculture. The opportunity for, um, for soil as a print error, carbon storage is tremendous. That's also bioeconomy. 
need to watch land and soil degradation, need to reduce that. Um, and this is a map from a recent publication of, of uh, my colleagues and mine. You can click it on, it's free of charge. It came out in Springer Publisher uh, months ago on the economics of land degradation. If we don't protect our soils, um, the bioeconomy uh, is uh, walking on thin ice. And um, we need to fully embrace the economics of land degradation in the bioeconomy strategy from, uh, from the resources to the final consumer products. Um, uh, all negative and positive externalities need to be included. As you see, there is very little green on this world map of the land uh, and soil degradation. That is 8 by 8 kilometer pixel, half a million pixel, a new way of uh, estimating through satellite imagery. The land degradation is behind that in some reasonably smart models. Um, uh, land and soil degradation is not only a matter of uh, the poor world. It's not only uh, a, a problem of uh, poor Africa. Actually, the Sahel has been catching up. Uh, it's greenish. There have been lots of investments, and uh, uh, anyway, uh, it's uh, 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 it costs about 300 billion uh, a year of uh, uh, losses. Uh, um, uh, this land degradation. It's because of bad management of resources. But we do have competing goals in the bioeconomy between food, energy, and feedstock materials. And we need to have a considerate, clear strategy to protect and enhance food security in the context of the emerging bioeconomy. And that um, strategy uh, is, uh, includes uh, seven components from education, from zero waste initiatives to market-oriented biofuel pricing. There needs to be not only caps on quota, but when uh, resource prices go up and food prices explode like in 2008 and 2011. There must be a mechanism to stop rather than to continue subsidizing. There needs to be a decentralized rural energy systems and income opportunities for small producers in the bioeconomy, so in incentives for small farmers. Um, that type of a strategy is currently under debate in a lot of emerging economies and developing countries. Let me close by a few remarks on the way forward. Um, the countries which are flagged here um, have written over the last uh, uh, five, seven years or so uh, bioeconomy policy strategies or bioeconomy science strategies. <coughs> Um, it's about 45 countries or so, um, including more and more low and middle income countries. <coughs> the strategies are quite different, but um, uh, something has happened there uh, uh, in the field of bioeconomy or bio-based economy. Not only in the powerhouses of bioeconomy like Brazil or Malaysia, which for obvious reasons got into it and then changed their, their strategies, but also in many other countries, such as uh, South Africa and Ethiopia. We felt it was time to bring these folks together in a meeting uh, under the auspices of the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, we invited to a bioeconomy summit in November last year in Berlin. There came about 700 people from 80 countries. And uh, um, we had, uh, uh, I think, um, not only a good debate, but also some outcome. We formed an international advisory body at global level. So we have now a global entity which wants to drive the global public goods aspects uh, of bioeconomy forward because doing bioeconomy strategies country by country is not good enough. Uh, you need to pull um, um, uh, uh, the capabilities together for transborder cooperation, especially in science. Many of these countries have science strategies, some have policy strategies, some have both. Uh, some are government led. 
others have a heavy dose of the private sector, or both. Uh, uh, dedicated government strategies, which um, are headed, say, by the White House or the German Chancellery, or in Japan by the, the Prime Minister, are the exception. But I think more and more they will come out of the agriculture or science or industry ministry niche uh, and become more holistic strategies. Um, we need to focus science and technology policy, and I don't want to walk you through all this. These are domains of science policy priorities, which we have put to a global panel of um, experts um, in the context of a Delphi study, where you do several rounds of questions, and the questions were, where do you see the priorities for bioeconomy uh, science and technology investments in the future, especially at transnational and global level. And this is what they came back with, and um, we presented and debated that at the Bioeconomy Summit. These are the, uh, the key areas of uh, science initiatives which we feel should be taken on, not country by country, but where we need alliances of cooperation, be it under the UN or G20 or whatever. Uh, Bio-principled cities, new food systems, sustainable marine production, artificial photosynthesis, biorefineries 4.0, so a new generation, and citizen and consumer uh, engagement uh, for, uh, and science-based engagement for uh, and with bioeconomy. Um, <clears throat> actually, the priority setting was roughly equal between <coughs> these seven priorities, uh, ranging from uh, basic science stuff on photosynthesis, which people expected only to materialize maybe in, um, in the decade of 2040 and beyond, whereas the others, they felt, are more readily implemented, implementable and will show benefits much sooner. Well, colleagues, uh, um, uh, the, the concluding statement uh, of the Bioeconomy uh, Summit uh, was a communique, which I suggest you may like to critically review. I would hope that uh, uh, Ireland uh, uh, continues to play an active role in this field. Uh, I think uh, uh, an environmentally conscious population, a strong natural resource base, a commitment to fight uh, hunger and malnutrition are all key ingredients uh, to be successful in a, in a bioeconomy strategy that matters to people. Thank you for your attention.